Hello, universe. Well, I certainly haven't meant to go this gap of time between recordings. Uh, I've been carrying this list of nine around for two days now. So I've been trying to find an opportunity to record. And I was going to record first thing this morning, but then I spent the rest of the day asleep. And so here we are on the 7th of May at 7.11 in the evening. And, uh, and yeah, I literally slept the day away and not because of a drug binge that took me up three days in a row too long. No, uh, not because I'm sick. No, I honestly think I slept the day away to try to stave off a bout of depression or, uh, mental uh, state of being consumed by un, uh, addressable variables. In other words, if there is something in the world affecting me that I really can't do anything about, if that effect is negative, what do I do to manage that? I have never really had a good answer for this. So, um, so yeah, I think I, I, I don't have days of depression often, but I've had bouts of depression my whole life. And it's something I'm very familiar with. So when I realize that today has the, signature of all of those previous bouts of self-annihilation, well, I recognize it. But this isn't about me. In fact, this feels like, if anything, it's a real-time karmic payback for deeds of a life that, at this point, has been overly indulgent in several capacities. If what your karma debt up until this point was due to your selection of uh, overindulgence in arenas in which you took advantage knowingly of others whose advantage you knowingly took, then provided the opportunity for all of your current wants and desires embodied in one single specific offering that then was kept tantalizingly in your space but not available? Well, that would seem like karma playing the kind of game that the universe is good at. And that's not the core of what I would say could lead to today's day of blah, because again, the universe can ask of me whatever it wants, and I'm here to provide. And if this is truly the way my life should finish, well, I already expected this. It's the quirk, the corkscrew, the plot twist, the I did not see that coming part of the, of the script that it just has me baffled. Completely baffled. And so, having been baffled now for three months regarding all of this, I just sit almost defeated. And that is what depresses me. I don't like feeling like I'm in the midst of something that I'm being impacted by. I don't have any idea how to change it for the, to the better. And I can't figure out why this force is persistent. Because I don't like to abandon things as a result of, I just couldn't figure that out. I mean, that's why I'm on planet Earth, right? Uh, <clears throat> so, 
to all of you who don't listen, which is the entire planet Earth, I am not here to create meaning or purpose in your life. I am simply on a journey to create meaning and purpose in my own life and trying to dictate the struggle and challenge and success and triumph of a life in that pursuit. And I know what my destiny and purpose are, something I didn't know for most of my life. In fact, so much didn't know that most of my life was spent bumping my head into every possible wrong ceiling of thinking if I could just burst through here, this must be where I'll find purpose and destiny. None of that ever happened. None of that was ever correct. And until I started listening to myself from inside, what truly got my day to sleep with the easiest mental state possible, well, it turned out that was to be helpful to anybody, to anything at any time. And in fact, the way I work myself out of any funk that I ever find myself in is to go be helpful in some regard to somebody out of the blue. Just go be helpful. And in so doing, remember that the most, if I were to cut my pie chart of character sheet into thirds and have to stay with the most simple descriptions possible, I am kind, I am forgiving, and I am understanding. So when I'm helpful... I get to be kind, forgiving, and understanding for the most part. And those are ways that my days, when stacked up consecutively, start to make my life have purpose and meaning. So, not that I've gotten away from that, but I've gotten away from the default return on that, which is to just go to work and get the juice of being helpful in the capacity that my work... Um, description allowed me to be helpful. I no longer have that. So I have been trying to be helpful to myself, which is a little indulgent, but given the state of my house and the state of neglect, I had uh, provided my general life. Being helpful to myself was necessary. So I think as I left uh, my big box store reality, I spent three or four weeks now (laughs) truly turning my living situation into a better one. Um, My life's not in so much chaos that there wasn't much, there was much to attend to there. Um, Other than this one karmic kick to the teeth, which, again, I've been anticipating. I just, if this is really how it was going to play out, again, the universe is so goddamn clever. But, um, in this, which is the 315th episode that I have put in the public airwaves of It's All My Fault, um, well, this module of 53 are, I could be right. And unfortunately, a lot of the things that I thought have gone squirrely sideways and completely out of control in the last 25 years of life, have still lived in those zones without having been proven something else. So I think anymore, the universe is a scrap pile of neglect and self-indulgence. And it just is, at least planet Earth 8675309 is. And it just is the situation we're in. And it's gotten here for a lot of reasons, including my apathy, my generation's apathy, if we're being frank. And not that if we had been hyperactive and aware and involved, things would be different. There'd probably just be more of us dead. But the power structure is a self-feeding, limiting mechanism of control for those who have the levers of power to pull. So, if any situation you can imagine doesn't end up here, well, then I'm shocked. Other than a complete overhaul of the system, which in my lifetime never seemed appropriate, relevant, or even a possibility, so you're just making shit up. But other than that chaotic result, 
this is where we end up. All roads lead to this, to this point of, hmm, of concentration of both non-tangible resources, like money, and tangible resources, like Earth's minerals and and uh, and land, I suppose, potential for food, shelter, etc. So <clears throat> the game being played by those who have decided it's better to play a game on a, a mass level than it is to come clean and control the powers of a, a, an exposed and and open governmental structure have now duped us into believing that it's our fault, that we don't deserve better, that we're lucky we have what we have, that this structure of somewhat representative government is as good as it gets and that none of it's fishy and it's all above board and when anything is discovered that is chaotic, it's all because of one person just going nutty. Yeah. So, like I said, I just don't see how there's a different path in my lifetime that doesn't end up right here. With the foxes patrolling the hen house, the hen's all terrified to say the wrong thing, and nobody getting that the game is actually being played by a bunch of wolves sitting outside controlling the whole escapade. And having so little recourse as to how to crack out of the egg that I sit in and make any of this different. Well, my idea is that we just stop the game completely. Forgive everybody that exists for anything they have done. Allow them to cooperatively re-enter the society at large in a capacity that gives them an opportunity not to feel like they have anything to fear. In other words, forgive everything of everybody. Because I understand how we all could have filled certain roles to become that which is the least likable in our humanity that currently exists on this planet. And I say that because I know that could have been me. I could have fallen victim to any of the games that are played. I could have been among those pulling the levers that are controlling the people at a mass level in a way that is just false and impersonated. It could have been me. I could have been the person compromising that which I know to be the most structured part of me. But no. That's not who I became. Instead, I became the person capable of forgiving those of you who did and followed the worst of your intuitions. And can I convince the world to do that? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. So I understand there's a risk at you stopping the charade you're currently pulling. But if all of you stop simultaneously, there's no risk to any of you. The controls that you're all levering, well, think of the dot that it's tying all of you into. Because you have to protect the charade, all of you are victim to the charade intact as it must remain. The threat of that crack keeps you all just adamantly part of the game. And that control controls your life. You have no out. You're in. You're the ultimate in. You're so in, they don't let you out. They just take you out. Well, again, what do you think ends that? All of you quitting the game simultaneously. And is this upheaval too much for the state of humanity to bear? Fuck no. Give us some credit. The one thing humans are is resilient. We have proven that again and again and again. And let's say that I'm wrong. That this isn't just squirrely behavior turning into this cluster nut of fuckery. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you all do know 
about an imminent catastrophe in the year 2029. <clears throat> Maybe you're well aware of it. And since you're in the know, and seven of the 7.3 billion of us have to go anyway, well, all you've been doing since figuring this out is deciding who's on that list of 300 million and making sure that they know to keep their fucking mouth shut because come 2028, when the whole thing goes into action, well, you're either in or you're out. Maybe you already know this. I hope not, because that seems like a whole burden of saving humanity on your shoulders without the actual uh, consultation of humanity to go with it. But I can see where that might have evolved. Hell, if I knew an asteroid was destined to hit this planet in 2029, what would I do? I don't know. That's a whole lot of knowledge to have. But, <clears throat> again, I don't give you that much credit. I don't think this is intentional. I think you've wound yourself into this little pretzel because, like most humans, you did the one thing that led to another thing that then made another thing have to happen, so then this has to go down. And pretty soon, everything that you're doing is because you have to protect the one slight that started it all. That seems like where humans go. But if an asteroid were really going to hit the planet, I just don't think there'd be enough people to shut the fuck up about it. Somebody would be here yelling, I know I shouldn't be telling you this. And I know we do a good job of shutting those people up now in America. Those who come to tell the truth get punished. But that's such a huge truth. I don't know if even you could keep that quiet. That's not just 18 astronauts. That's a bigger truth. But the pursuit of truth is something that is new to me. So I can't say that I'm a pro when it comes to knowing how to actually champion and justice that which is integral to all of us, like knowledge of planet-wide imminent destruction. But truth to me is something that I've always been very well aware of. I've just always been capable of trying to hide it. Dastardly. In ways that now seem so... amateur. I don't know. Living with truth is such an easier life path. And that's why I think if we just offer the system a chance to reset, we go to government by literally lottery decision. I don't see any problem with deciding who the nine Supreme Court justices are based on lottery. I see absolutely no issue with that. I see no issue with doing the same for my senators, my vice president, my Department of Defense secretary. I don't care what position it is. I want three years of commitment by lottery. Every citizen over the age of, say, what, 28 is in. And listen, I would lower that to 25. But until 25, you don't have enough shit in your head to fucking balance out your accountability. Now, could I see a sample where we have to represent those who are, say, 18 to 25 by some level of maybe 4% representation, 3% representation across the system? Sure. But at that age, I don't know how much I want you in the Supreme Court position. So there are some things here to figure out, including how do you represent an entire populace of adult, free, liberated, intellectual human beings. I don't know that we've got that all worked out. So, I do know that the system we're in is broken. I do know the system we're in is not going to fix itself. And I do know the system we're in, those in power, have all the mm, uh, incentive to maintain the tilted system as it is because exposing it exposes them to some dastardly deeds. Well, I don't care about your dastardly deeds. I forgive you. I think you put yourself in that position in a way that forced your hand again and again and again, and now you're here. Well, fine. Let's clear the air. Let's get over it. And let's create a system that's of advantage for everybody. So, that's who I am. Now, why shouldn't you be listening to me? Because doing anything active with your life is better than passively listening to another person babble on about themselves. And all this is, is me babbling on about myself. So, to me, there's no question that you're wasting your time. So why do I do this? I do this because 
It doesn't waste my time to have a verbal diary of everything I'm going through as this epiphany of the new me tries to fit into this universe where I just don't see a place for me still to this day. I know what I'm supposed to do here, and I'm fine with it. I actually look forward to it. But that doesn't mean that the universe will accept me. I doubt that they will. And I know this going into this situation. So as I try to bring kindness, love, loving, forgiveness, and understanding to the universe, do you know what I'll get back? Hostility. Rejection. Angst. Um, attacks. Separation. Misunderstandings. And <clears throat> because we're trained not to think we deserve unconditional love. It's stunning. And, um, and uh, I mean, I've been through it so many times, I just know what the reactions are. And I, I, I guess, if you're listening, I challenge you to think to yourself, why do you react that way? Why do you immediately react as if you don't deserve unconditional love from some random human being who has nothing of return debt to expect? Or it's not unconditional. So, why this is threatening to a populace full of people who think they're exceptional and deserve all the world's resources? Well, I don't know. Maybe somewhere in there is a bit of irony, huh? Okay, well, I'm going to um, tackle the 420 issue here at 2148 into the episode, and we're not going to get to 45 minutes today. Well, I shouldn't be promising that. Pause. Unpause. I happen to live on one of those corners where quite a few cars stop. I lived out one block away from a Sprouts grocery store, and so if you're cutting north through the neighborhood, you'll stop at this stop sign with your music playing in the summertime and your windows down. So I hear a whole shit ton of music. But I believe for the very first time ever, I just heard Portishead and Mysterions playing at the stop sign. Wow. Talk about a callback to my past. Pause. All right, unpause. Well, I'm being awfully generous with the unpause, considering that it's now, uh, well, 4.20 in Hawaii, I think. I don't know, are they three hours behind us? It's 7.20 a.m. on now the, the 8th of May. Hey, guys. Bye. And I'm not really that tired. I just had to go. Um, I listened to, well, listened. I was swept up in the Nuggets loss last night and uh, frankly got distracted. So getting back to this this morning, my fault. But I did want to get back to this because, well, you know, one of the things I think I've been blessed with in life is, well, blessed is a strong word here. That's the wrong word here, frankly. But I've always thought that in some ways uh, my fellow humans were a bit hysterical in their um, assessment of the chemical uh, composition that creates the falling in love syndrome. And it's not that I always thought this was uh, something for the emotionally weak this sense of falling in love. Um, I always thought it was something just overly uh, emphasized. I don't know. I just never came close to thinking that's how it worked. So that description to me always felt at least um, exaggerated, if not flat out, uh, in uh, inexperienceable. Um, and then something changed. And uh, I don't know if that's my emotional state of being changed and permitted something to happen that's never happened to me before. Or if my, uh, if my 53 years of, <laughs> of sampling, of sampling triple digits of possibilities always coming up short, well, if maybe 
53 years in the making is what it took to finally find something sampling is not enough for. I don't know. It is an odd conundrum to be facing less than two months from my 54th birthday. I didn't have this card in the deck, so how it got pulled, I don't even know. But it did. So I wanted to get that on uh, tape, as I like to say, before I shut my recorder down. I also wanted to get on tape that my tennis fucking serve is out of control right now. I mean, fucking A. If I were to play singles, I would, I would be elevated to 5.0 based on how many aces I would generate. I can pinpoint my serve from the doubles alley into the into the uh, backhand corner on the deuce side with 7 out of 10 precision, if not 8 or 9 out of 10. It is a money serve for me right now. I can even spin it in there on the second. And uh, and it's a lethal spot to, to, to hit in doubles. So, so, I should be playing competitive tennis right now, but I don't want to get elevated to something above my head. So, what should I do? Keep practicing, I guess. Maybe I'll be able to play 5 soon enough. That said... I played no golf, so this week I intend to play some golf, and when we get to number one on my list, I'll admit the other thing I intend to do this week, which is some nighttime activity. Oh, and I've been trying to get the house in mushroom shape for almost a month now. It'll be a month tomorrow. And I guess I'm there, but I'm not totally there because it's like, why not have the kitchen in tip-top shape, not just in organized shape? I don't know. Same with the bathroom. Could I get them both in tip-top shape by this weekend? I don't know, because by this weekend, I'm not stopping. That's when I'm taking mushrooms for sure. Um, because the 12th is Friday, and the 12th is going to be the last... In other words, I want that to be the day that I come back in June after sobriety for a month. Which, of course, rolls into the 13th, because I will be using drugs on the 12th. So I'll be sober from the 13th to the 13th. Or Because I will be sober on the 13th, the next day that I can actually use drugs will be the 13th of June. And this would be the day after, or day before, I don't know, it's right around Flag Day, which is important. So, there you go. So I'll be working on the house, I guess. I mean, not I guess. No doubt. Yard work specifically because it is the time of year that I have to get that done. And <clears throat> I didn't put landscaper on my list of careers that I missed out on that I would have been good at. Um, but I think I really would have enjoyed the work. So if I were going to slot that in anywhere, it would probably come in in the number four slot. But I, I just I didn't want to make this list something where I hadn't really considered this career. It was just something that in retrospect, I think would have fulfilled my life's skill set versus interests in a way that might have worked out for me, um, instead of just bouncing around on jobs that were meaningless so I had enough money to feed my dog. I could have done landscaping for 20 years and probably been satisfied with those 20 years. But, I mean, it never would have been the kind of thing I would have chosen to do. I'd have just had to drop into it and then kept doing it because I kind of liked it enough that nothing else seemed like a better challenge. So it wouldn't have been a career by choice. It would have been by default. And by default is how a lot of these would have worked out, especially number two. But, um, well, let's just, uh, let's, so the nine careers that I think I could have succeeded at, that um, I think I had the skill set for, and that, frankly, um, you know, if, if life were to happen all over again and these are the careers that I end up in, I'm not surprised. Well, number nine is the obvious one, politician. And I say this because I think in all of our hearts, in some low form of the sludge that we are, we think, yeah, I could have been a politician. Because at this point in life, how much compromise are you willing to make versus how much charisma are you willing to generate versus how much lying are you willing to, uh, to live with? And I could have put pretty high marks in all of those categories at some point in my life. And frankly, uh, how many times did I think about trying to eat the system from within? 
you just don't get your chance, though. They rub you out. You know, you just, there is no eating the system from within. You either join the system, in which case you are the inside of the insider's club of the inside clubs of all time. Or you somehow think that you can not join that club and live on the periphery. Uh, you can try that, but you can only walk a very, very fine line that constantly appeals to the current status quo while you give your little bit of a speech about how things could be different. Or you try to buck the system and you get about a 27-month window to do your thing before you're taken out. Those are your choices. So, knowing that I'm too weak for two or three, that I would have certainly fallen into number one. Much like the sixth choice on my list, I'm fairly glad that I didn't somehow end up in an election that I won that sent me into a political career. That could have been a devastating outcome for everyone involved. So, that is my number nine career that I probably could have been good at that I'm glad I didn't take at any point in my life. Okay, so, I put that below number eight because maybe number eight's a little bit of a grab bag, but... You know, as a kid, when you're like, yeah, when I grow up, I want to be blank, 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 blank. Well, my list was, was probably four things. Uh, rock star, uh, magician, superhero, astronaut. So, obviously, NASA took number four away from me, right? Um, I, I mean, we don't have the technology to go to the moon anymore, we lost that technology, or whatever that guy says, right? Um, so, it's just like, it doesn't look like astronaut was a career that was opening up to more possibilities, like I thought it was as a kid. It seemed like they were just going to um, partner up with the Russians and do some experiments with hand-wringing and stuff up in space. So, rather than see that as an avenue toward success, and, and frankly, the older you get, the less you think magician looks like the career path you thought it was when you were eight. And same with probably my sense of superhero. I, I mean, if we're being honest, seriously honest, I'm still pretty much as interested in that superhero career as I was when I was seven. Right now. Like, if I all of a sudden get superpowers and become Batman, of course. Well, I know Batman doesn't have superpowers. Don't give me that shit. If my life were to work out that somehow next month I am Sudoku Man... And that has some sort of effect on civil uh, movement forward and enlightenment for all. Well, of course I'm going to embrace the part. But, again, I'm not sure how that would work. Um, and Rockstar. Ah, I didn't really enjoy playing the piano. However, I have reacquired an uh, electric keyboard that is basically an electric piano to start and start I have practicing again. I don't know. I just love music. But I'm not that good at it. So I don't know what I'm trying to do reconnecting with my young self. But classical music on the piano has calmed me down quite a bit in the last month. So I believe it's here to stay. So I don't pretend that any of number eight were legitimate aspirations. But if as a kid you think about becoming a superhero and then you get bitten by a radioactive spider and pretty soon, you know, you got to miss all these classes because... Oh, you just keep throwing shit around your room with all this webbing coming out of your fingertips. I would say my chance of that dice roll has passed. So let's move on to the ones that were obvious. And seven and six and five, frankly, are all in that category. Seven is teacher, professor, camp counselor, whatever. Some level of instructor. And I always knew I'd be good in this role. So... This was one that by default I thought I would just end up at some point uh, embracing. Uh, especially as a philosophy major, you have to consider that the most likely path that can move forward is in the educational vertical. So if you're not willing to think of professor as a possible outcome, you're doing the wrong major. So I had already considered these outcomes as potentially my future, but I just did not have it in me to go back for a master's and, and doctorate in philosophy. So, rather than pursue that, or, as it turns out, any other education, nope, <clears throat> I did none. I bounced around. Um, and which is odd, because at any point in time, I could have gotten certified to teach high school or elementary education or any of the above. 
and uh, and started that job, which I would have liked. Um, but there were also so many concerns with the direction education was heading in my lifetime that it just got less and less attractive as an option. So to be honest, I just... I had to either get into that early and then stay somewhere where I wouldn't have become disillusioned, um, or I had to find a place late that meant something to me uh, in terms of education uh, toward the next generation. But I just was never that interested in going back to a system that I felt kept breaking further and further. So is that the reason that number six is on the list? Maybe. But I did actually apply to law school and get accepted, so I could have very easily become a lawyer. I turned down that law school application, or I mean admission, um, at Boston College in 1991 because, I well, I, I deferred it, actually. And I had paid $2,150 as my uh, tuition deposit in the month of June. So they ha already had some of my money. And so I deferred because I just thought if I went to law school at that point, I would flunk out. I had barely made it through my thesis. My thesis was a killer project that I should never have, have uh, undertaken. But having gotten through it and then thinking about immediately signing up for law school classes sounded at best onerous. So I deferred for a year and took a position in New Hampshire that ended up being a residential advisement slash teaching one class position. And that was interesting and gave me a chance to teach at a position level that I wasn't qualified for. But because it was a private institution and I had a co-teacher who was certainly qualified, um, it, it moved me. And I got to teach a class the second semester by myself that moved me even more. So... That experience will never leave me and convinced me that going to law school was a mistake. So I never went back and I never got that money back. So thinking like that is what leads me to number five, which is I certainly could have been a grifter. I have the mind for it. I have the mindset for it. I have the, I am smarter than you for it. Um, and at one point I had the nihilistic, none of this fucking matters for it. But I've lost most of all of that now. So grifter is not even remotely an option. But boy, was it for a while. And it was at one time when I met, and I'll admit, I thought I knew what love was because I met someone when I was at perhaps my most damaged. I met someone equally damaged. And we interlocked in a way that allowed us to make sense of the universe. As damaged as both of us were. And we were. Um, but in that little uh, connection was the spark of, you know, you'd be really good as that phony preacher. And I said, yes, yes, I would. I'd be fucking great at it. And she said, I'd be good at supporting that. And I said, are you seriously suggesting that we could start a religion? And, uh, and we talked about it at least enough that I still remember how much fun that conversation was. So at some point in my life, I know had the right grift come along, I'd have snapped in. I'd be part of it and I wouldn't have thought about it once. But now, of course, I see all the negative energies that swirl around anything that brings that level of distrust into the universe and know that that's all wrong. So, five can't leave the list, though. It even can't leave the middle of the list because, frankly, it's sort of that thing that could have gone either way. And I'm glad it went the wrong way. I mean, the right way, however you want to look at it. Um, number four. And this one could be higher and probably should be. But I really never, I never gave the trades enough consideration to think that that wasn't settling. I don't know how else to put it. And that includes this one, which is electrician. And I was introduced to electricity 
in the seventh grade in an electrician class where we wired up and framed up a little bathroom. Or was it a bedroom? I don't remember. Might have been two rooms. And I think it was actually because we had a we had a circuit uh, we had a, a circuit breaker panel board, um, a breaker panel. Anyway, the point is, I got interested in this um, level of physics and and uh, commercial uh, uh, contracting early enough that it could have easily just been something I glommed onto. But you're told. Go to college, go to college, go to college. Otherwise, maybe you'll be an electrician. I don't know. I always thought of it as sub-tier, which is a negative from the advisement of my youth because this is on four only because I think I would have enjoyed three more. But four and three are two places where I could have had a happy life. But because I was told these were beneath me, they never really were fair options. And three is cab driver. Yeah, today there's no such thing. But in my day, you had to know a city to be a cab driver. And you had to really know the city. And <clears throat> before maps came along, I prided myself on knowing the city I lived in. Whether it be on foot, on bike, or in my car. I went everywhere and knew everything about the city by the time I'd been there a year. So, like Portland, Portland was the easiest city in the history of cities to learn. And I can't tell you how many natives of Portland didn't understand their own fucking city. And so, early on, I came to see how advantageous it was to be able to navigate a new city confidently. And every native can navigate their city confidently. They just haven't learned the layout from a map. They've learned it from the inert sense of growing up there. Just like I know Denver. I still look at the map of Denver sometimes to realize just what's north and south and how that all works out in distance because this city is weirdly laid out in terms of what's far away from what. Or at least it feels that way. Whereas Portland's grid was laid out in a block structure that was countable all the way from east to west. So cab driver. I'm also a huge fan of the 7 to 70 minute conversation. Love it. In fact, if it goes to 70 minutes, I can make it comfortable all the way to the end. And if it goes 7, well, I can flare off whatever you bring in for an instant, no matter what it is. And so I think I would have been really good at the level of customer service necessary to be successful as a cab driver. Because a, I'd have been efficient. B, I'd have been interested in the conversation, but only from the point of view of what you brought to, to the conversation, unless C, we're in an extended cab drive, in which case I can make the conversation at least interesting all the way to the end. And D, I really like driving. I just enjoy bobbing and weaving through traffic. That's the truth. So would I have been arrested too much for going too fast as a cab driver? That's possible. Might have lost my license and ended up somewhere in that number five category. But, um, yeah. I gotta say, my whole life, I thought I'd have been a fucking good cab driver. And that leads me to number two. And should I take a bong hit before number two? How about I give you this little piece of information which I find funny these days. I was uh, listening to somebody uh, do a podcast, and they pronounced the word catastrophe. Catastrophe. And I thought to myself, huh. I mean, it's how the word looks. Catastrophe. And thanks to the internet, we have people now who confidently say words incorrectly because they look obvious. Catastrophe, that does not look like. Cat catastrophe? Sure, it does look like that. So, there's my injection before we get to number two. Number two. If we're being honest, and frankly, fuck, I gotta be honest here. Number two is prisoner. I'll say this. I'm the wrong color to be in prison for the rest of my life. If I'm any other color, I believe number two is my career of not choice. I've gotten away with some shit because I'm white. And I know it. 
It's part of the reason that I'm ready to forgive everybody for everything. And it's not like I've got this list of, oh my God, the police let me off for that? Nope. But I know for every time I'm pulled over and not searched, I'm pretty lucky. And I know why it is. So number two. Yep. Let's be honest. If I am born anything but a white male in America, if I'm of any other heritage or complexion, well, I've been in some serious shit that probably still has me in some serious shit. And that's the truth. So that's my number two, because I didn't want to end this on a depressing note. And the one I left off of here for sure is philosopher, because that is not a job. <laughs> uh, and I would still go back and be a philosophy major for sure. There's no question. It changed my life for the better. It's like mushrooms. Those two things happen every time I'm on this planet. Those are good points to think about. To think about the meaningful side of life, the important part of manifestation on this planet. So, a philosopher. Well, I would imagine in some other version of life, some past Egyptian incarnation where there was time for us to express ourselves as our true selves. <laughs> well, somewhere I've gotten the chance to live as a philosopher. But not here. No. <laughs> so here, uh, my number one career of possibility that I overlooked or in some way did not take advantage of is comic. Yeah, I know. I'm not funny. I can get that. But, I mean, fuck, man. Telling jokes is more about how much you can endure the nights that you're off as much as it is anything. You have to be willing to take chances and fail. And well, for most of my life, I definitely. Uh, steered away from things uh, that I might fail at. And trying stand-up comedy. Uh, it's always just been something where if you think you're funny, uh, and then you go find out from the world that you're not. Well, what does that do to you? Well, for the longest time, it's kept me paralyzed. From even making the attempt. So I promised myself that in this attempt at living without a job, I would commit to at least trying stand up comedy for once on some open mic. And though I don't sound uh, all that enthusiastic. I promise you, I'm ready. I've got four or five different ways to go here. I think they're all pretty funny. 
I have a favorite. Sometimes we just, we have to go through a bit of life to finally arrive at a place where our confidence no longer gives a fuck. I mean, success or fail, I know I have to try. So, Coincidentally, my next module will be reaching out to the population at large on two levels, both personally and in this first time attempt at actually communicating that which I find funny about the world, which frankly is almost everything. Except the last 10 minutes of this recording. So, comic. Philosopher comic. I don't think crying comic is the way to go. So we're going to have to cut this act out. But... As much as I get touched by the idea of potential still available in my own life, I know that the potential available in all of us is still enormous. So I don't discount how valuable it is to believe in ourselves. And I believe in all of us, myself included. And I guess it's time to prove that.